Uh, I would say that there are a number of ingredients to, to our success. Number one, we've been blessed here in, in the city of Markham. Uh, we are the most diverse city in all of Canada, but we really have received people from all over the world. And while certainly the demographics racially and the countries of origin obviously differ, there's some consistency in that a number of people have come here to the city of Markham, highly educated, highly skilled, very strong uh, entrepreneurial uh, drive and, and spirit. I think uh, the fact that, that we have rolled out the welcome mat, and it, it goes beyond just doing that, but uh, yeah, making sure that we're reaching out, that people feel engaged. And, and uh, to be honest about it, I think people come here with the right attitude. I think that's extremely important. You know, when you look at the countries where people have come from, they have come from places of the world that face uh, a lot more turmoil and disruption than, than we have here. And I, I think they've come with a real strong feeling that they, they want to make a difference here. They want this to be a better place for themselves and certainly their children. So you, you bundle up all of those ingredients into to one package and I think it begins to uh, create the success that we've achieved. So the notion that immigration, the notion that if you have a diverse community causes you way more problems than benefits for a community, all they need to do is, is come to the city of Markham and see how diversity, how people coming from other parts of the world can create a dynamic community, but also in our case, has actually added to the economic prosperity that we've enjoyed. Well, there's, there's been a lot. I mean, first and foremost, I, I call it, you know, rolling out the red carpet. It, it's really making people feel welcome. That That's important. There's a real strong sense of inclusivity here on a number of fronts, and I'll, and I'll speak to that. But, you know, if, if people don't feel that they are welcome, if they feel that they are being isolated, if they feel that what they have to say, what they want to do, how they want to be a part of the community is not important to the leaders in the community, that's picked up very, very quickly. So number one, it's rolling out that red carpet, uh, welcoming people to our community, and then some very deliberate attempts to take what you say and turn those into actions. And, and I'm very proud of what we've done as a, as a community. First and foremost, we take every opportunity in our community to celebrate the diversity that we have. It's not been without criticism sometimes, but right here at our city hall, we celebrate the Chinese New Year. There's very few places right at the City Hall where you open the doors and bring in the Chinese community and celebrate their, their New Year. We have Black History Month uh, right here at the Civic Center and a number of national Independence Days that get recognized with flag raising and some sort of a celebration. I think what that does is, is it says we recognize that you've come from another place. And by the way, there's a lot of great things that may have happened where you come from, and, and there's still things evolving in your place of origin. But it also says that we value the contribution that you're making to our community, that uh, you're not just blending in with everyone else and that uh, you're just another group. You're an important group to this community. And then uh, aside from that, uh, the, the sort of the feel good and the welcoming and the inclusiveness, We've taken steps uh, both here at local government, because the city of Markham is also part of the region of York. And a number of years ago, I co-chaired the Inclusivity Action Plan. This is where we brought together a number of social agencies, the school boards, the hospitals, the police, and said, for everything that we do to serve the community, are we reaching the people that need the help in the various uh, cultural groups? And so the most tangible result of that whole exercise is that we established what we call welcome centers, five welcome centers throughout the region of York. Two of them are right here in the city of Markham because of, of the diversity. And this is one-stop shopping where new Canadians can walk in, uh, certainly learn English as a second language, uh, get access to some of the social services that they need. I can tell you, even for people who've been who've been born in Canada, who are second, third, fourth generation, anytime they face a challenge, getting through the maze of programs is, is not an easy thing to do. Well, you factor in a linguistic or cultural barrier, 
it's that much worse for those that are looking for help for someone in their family or, or themselves. So these welcome centers break down all of those barriers. They truly are vibrant places where people come together to get access to those services, learn English as a second language. Again, something that's tangible. You're not just saying you're welcome here, but we're here to help and make sure that you are going to be successful. And John, I don't know what it's like in the United States, but right now, for us in Canada, it takes about 15 years before a new Canadian feels totally integrated into Canadian society. And really what the Welcome Centre and other initiatives are meant to do is to reduce the amount of time. Uh, because 15 years is too long. In, that, in those 15 years, someone who's in their in the peak of, of their life, uh, you know, becomes a, a little older. Young children, teenagers become young adults. And if they've, uh, you know, been part of isolation, if they feel they hear their parents talk about how they're not welcome in the community, these create other problems for, for a community actually longer term, not just in, in the present day. So we're trying to cut that, that integration down. We want people to feel at home. We want them to have access. We want them to be successful. And if you want to say, you know, why are we doing this for all those people? Quite often I answer people by saying, look, it's in your, your, your best interests that new Canadians get fully integrated quicker. We want them to be successful. We want them to be the next successful business in our community. We want them contributing to our economy because there's a, a quality of life that we've come to enjoy, certainly throughout the province of Ontario and in Canada, that needs to be sustained. And the only way that you're going to sustain that is by having new people create and contribute to, to the economy. Well, it's a bit of both. And uh, not to be, you know, sound like a politician that doesn't give us an answer. But <laughs> it's a bit of both. I think Markham is unique. There's a very strong sense of community here. And I think that's one of the things new Canadians appreciate about our community. Uh, things like even valuing our, our heritage buildings and preserving the heritage that we have within our community. That, that speaks to the long history that we've had in, in Markham. And yet there's people that move into our community that love the fact that we have these historic areas that have been preserved in one of the fastest growing areas in, in North America. I'll tell you, our, our education system, and this is not the city of Markham's responsibility, but again, we're very fortunate that we have a publicly funded education system here in Ontario that is uh, ranked uh, certainly up there around the world in, in terms of the results, in terms of the uh, funding that we give uh, our public education system. Now, what's interesting is that we have good schools, we have great curriculum, and I think in part because of the new Canadians who've come here who recognize education is important, when there's province-wide testing, uh, usually in the top five schools in the province, three or four of them will be right here from the city of, uh, of Markham. So the education system, I think, is important. Also the fact that we have one of the safest communities in, in uh, not just Canada, but in, in North America. And I really give uh, real credit here to York Regional Police because uh, they make a real concerted effort, like the city of Markham does, to reach out, to establish those relationships with leaders of the different cultural groups. So if an issue arises, not only are they seen to be responding to those issues, but they can personally call up the leaders of the community. And sometimes it's those leaders, in fact, that help the police with whatever issue has, has arisen. So um, you have a, a York Regional Police Service that is very connected to the cultural groups. And, and that may sound like, oh, that's an easy thing to do. It's not. Again, I speak to the fact that many of these people have come from other parts of the world where there is turmoil where there's a real distrust, a distrust for the police or for authorities. And yet, York Regional Police, through their different uh, efforts, particularly setting up uh, a diversity team with York Regional Police, particularly reaching out and trying to get members of our cultural communities to uh, look at policing as a, as a career, all these things have, I think, helped us and distinguished us from other parts of, uh, of Canada, for sure.
Well, there's been a, a couple of things, and, and uh, you know, uh, certainly growing up in a, in a much smaller community, because my parents came to Markham back in 1965, it wasn't as diverse as, as it is today. I certainly saw some of the challenges, the difficulty, being different, having a different name, bringing different food to the school. I, I saw some of that every day, and uh, you know, it wasn't a difficult life, but it certainly opens your eyes to a number of things. Um, and it may sound a, a little corny, but you know, I, I really look no further than my mother. Uh, you know, here's a, an Italian woman who moved to an area that was not very diverse. And I, I give her credit because uh, she was not one to sort of sit back and again uh, feel isolated. Uh, on the contrary, there'd be times during some special dinners that, that we'd be just about sitting down to, to have dinner and my mom would be halfway out the door with a package and say, where are you going? Well, I'm taking this to our neighbors. I want them to taste some of this. And it, it taught me that, you know, yeah, no matter whether you've lived here all your life, whether you're a new Canadian, we can all focus on the challenge and the difficulty that any of those things present. Uh, but she certainly taught me that you don't sit back, you, you go and you find those positive things, you make those connections. And I saw how we were the only Italian family, uh, certainly on the street, perhaps in the neighborhood, and yet we're very connected to our neighbors. And, and my mother uh, had difficulty with the English language, but she had no difficulty establishing the relationships. And I think uh, that's certainly been uh, certainly part of my drive to say, what is it, what can we do? Whether you're a public official, whether you're a business leader, whether you head up the local Rotary Club, and by the way, this is a community effort. When I look at some of these uh, service clubs who were homogeneous, were white Anglo-Saxon, they've opened their doors, they welcome new members, and it's quite diverse. I, I go to our sports organizations. Uh, just a few months ago, I was at uh, a local hockey team. You look at the, uh, the makeup of the hockey team, you see that diversity. What do they do when there's special occasions? They decorate the dressing room, whether it's Chinese New Year or some other celebration. So again, it, it's, it's a real credit to everyone in the community. Are there people here or uh, certainly in other parts of the greater Toronto area that don't appreciate the diversity? Yeah, there are, but you know, they'll always be there. And I think, again, we look to the contribution that everyone makes uh, to our community. And I only have to look at, at initiatives like our, our Markham Stovall Hospital here that just expanded, where you have the uh, Chinese community contributing a million dollars to that hospital expansion. The Pakistani community almost contributing two million dollars to that expansion. It's because they, they have adopted their new home. This is their home. And they recognize that going forward, it's where their kids and, and grandchildren are very much going to be a part of the success of this community, our province, and our country. And so while my mother may have uh, provided that inspiration to me at an early age, I get inspired each and every day when I meet these new Canadians who are making a difference in, in our community.